I've lived in County Durham for nearly 16 years now. It is an amazing part of the country with rolling hills, beautiful rivers and loads of open space. And if you know anything about the recent or medium term history of Durham, you'll know that it used to be an industrial powerhouse, a coal mining powerhouse with collieries and pits dotted all over the county. As you drive or cycle around the county, every few miles you'll see an old pit village. You can see it in the names uh, of, the, of the villages, the artwork and the culture. It really is an amazing heritage that is part of who County Durham is. But the industry that was that heritage was taken away from this community in the 1980s. But what if the legacy of that industry could be something that powers our low carbon future? What if coal mines could give us a solution for one of our bigger challenges in moving to a low carbon society? What if mines flooded for much of the last few decades could be a source of energy again and a source of heat? Well, if you've worked in the low carbon economy in the Northeast uh, over the last few years, you'll have heard people talking about mine water heating. And it's a wonderful story, isn't it? That heritage that we're so proud of, offering a solution for, to the future that we're so worried about. There are mine workings that crisscross a lot of our region. And if we could tap into them and extract warm water, then maybe that warm water can be a source of heat to heat our homes and buildings. What is not to like? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk through what is being proposed when we talk about mine water heating where it could be used and why I think the promise of mine water is actually a problem for rapid climate action that we need. So what's the story? Well, for over a hundred years, coal was mined in County Durham. Pits and collieries opened and closed around the county. Towns and villages dispersed throughout the coal field and hundreds of thousands of people earned a living from that industry. And when the mines closed, the pumps that would keep water from filling the mine workings were switched off. And many, if not all the coal seams that, we'd been ex that we had extracted from were filled with water, or maybe they collapsed, or both. And because these seams tend to be hundreds of meters below ground, where the ground is warmer than it is at the surface, the water that flooded the seams is also warm. In some cases, we actually still pump water out of the mines, the, the legacy mines to, to the surface to treat it because flooding old mines has the risk that flooded old mines has the risk that it might, that water might leach into drinking water. So we're pumping water to the surface to clean it before releasing it back underground or back or out to sea. So these flooded mines have, are filled with water that is warm. And when we have warmth, we have energy. And the water in those flooded mines tends to, be around, tends to be around 20 or 25 degrees C. So potentially we have a meaningful amount of energy to take from it. All great so far. And academics at universities in the area and my experience tends to be with Durham University academics and they are really leading on this as well as experts in the coal authority can see the potential for extracting this energy and using it for good. And there are several really good projects in place or in development that are looking to use heat from flooded mines in this way. We have the development of homes at CM Garda Village that will be heated in part by a heat network that's taking heat from the former Dordan Mine Water Treatment Plant. And we have an operational project as part of the Gateshead Heat Network that is taking heat from mines in, underneath Gateshead to serve buildings around the city. This is amazing. And there will be other projects in development the potential is vast because the mining industry in the region was vast. So is this it? What if all this talk, the idea about air source heat pumps is just barking at the wrong tree? Is this mine water heating the solution to low carbon heating in the Northeast? Well, I actually think it's not. And I think the conversation around mine water heat risks casting doubt and breeding delay in the low carbon heating energy transition that we need to decarbonize homes and buildings in our region. So why am I so pessimistic? Well, for a few reasons. In drilling a borehole to access a mine, we've got the cost of that drilling, and we also have risk. Drilling holes to 100, 150 meters, 200 meters below the surface is a challenge. 
particularly if we're doing it in urban built up areas and even more so when we're trying to hit a flooded mine shaft, a mine shaft that's maybe two meters wide. And we're trying to find that mine shaft using coal records from 40 years ago or older. And then we're hoping that that mine shaft has not collapsed in the meantime, um, that it's flooded and that the flooded water is warm, that the water that if we if we found the shaft and we extracted that water, that the water re would replenish to that shaft as quickly as we extracted it. And then that the heat would remain in the water over the medium term of us extracting heat from it. And then finally, we have the potential ongoing maintenance challenges of dealing with dirty water that we've taken from a mine. So in drilling a hole to find this water, we have cost and we have risk and risk of no reward. There is a promise of, of powering our low carbon future from our industrial past, but there's also uncertainty about whether we'll be able to in the first place. Back in 2022, I went to visit a mine water scheme whilst it was on site in development at Hebben in South Tyneside. This scheme was looking to drill into mine workings, 200 meters below ground to extract heat to serve an energy center that would then heat homes nearby. I actually went back to this same site and saw an energy center built and operating earlier this month in 2024. So did everything go to plan? Well, no, the energy center in 2024 is serving those buildings from air source heat pumps, not mine water source heat pumps. Just done an event in Hebben in South Tyneside um, and I didn't realize, but it's next to this energy center for serving several buildings and that building up there, um, I think from air source heat pumps of a heat network, which is really exciting. It's cool to see a low carbon neighborhood district heating system in the Northeast. And I know of one other scheme in Stanley in County Durham where a borehole was drilled successfully, but then funding ran out before the full scheme could be developed. Okay, a couple of examples that I have of schemes that haven't gone well doesn't mean that this isn't a good solution. And yeah, that's fair, I'd agree. There will be great mine water schemes in the near future. Mine water schemes that provoke district heat networks that provide low carbon, low cost heat to communities or business or industry and a potentially provoke regeneration in communities that lost a lot when the mines are closed. And that is exciting. But I'm still worried. A focus on these big pro projects risks pulling our gaze away from progress. Mine water schemes will not be the solution for all of the around 250,000 homes in County Durham. Heat networks will not be feasible in all of our cities, towns or villages across the dispersed rural county. And the cost and risk associated with drilling with a hope that we might strike warm gold means we delay progress on reducing emissions in the short term. So what's the alternative? What is it that I'm suggesting? Well, it's really simple. I think that we need to deploy air source heat pumps at scale as quickly as possible. Air source heat pumps, when sized and installed correctly, can heat any home. They are very efficient and they can reduce heating costs in most homes when comp compared to a gas boiler. They can be expensive to install, but with government grants and an increasing number of low interest green loans, they can be affordable to many. So we should install air source heat pumps that are accessible to maintain and accessible to upgrade in the future. And you know what? We need our leaders nationally and locally, politically and academically to speak with clarity that this is the case, that this is the plan. And we need to be careful not to cast doubt on the only solution that we have to decarbonize homes quickly enough to respond to climate change. The messaging needs to be clear and consistent that air source heat pumps are the option. And in some areas of the Northeast, a mine water scheme could help decarbonize whole neighborhoods, villages or towns. Or if we've already installed air source heat pumps, it could help reduce costs for heating in those places and reduce fuel poverty and spread regeneration. But we can't say that mine water heating is the solution to reduce emissions as quickly as possible because it won't be applicable to many communities. And proponents of mine water heating shouldn't cast doubt on the deployable solution we have for decarbonisation today. My concern is that when we elevate projects or technologies like mine water heating, we simply distract. That in stating that something might be different in the future, we delay progress. 
we cast doubt on the present and we confuse. If we put all our eggs under the ground, we risk wasting money developing schemes like these when the reward doesn't really match the risk. So if you're in the Northeast or in a part of the country that used to have a mining industry, then fantastic. There is an opportunity potentially to get some warmth from the ground to help um, heat in a low carbon and a low cost manner. But these projects take time to develop. They're costly to develop and they come with significant risk. We shouldn't wait for heat under the ground to be found before we decarbonize heating and we should deploy heat pumps as quickly as possible, air source heat pumps as quickly as possible. There will be cases across the whole country where warm water is close to the surface and we should utilize that wasted energy in, in some manner to provide low cost heat. But it, this is not the get out of jail free card. This is not the hope for hundreds of thousands of new jobs. This is not the way that we're gonna heat most buildings in the UK. So what do you think? Have you seen any mine water projects near you? Uh, are they a success? Are they operating well? Do you disagree with my conclusions? Do you think that we should be putting our eggs in that basket? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. So please do drop me a comment.